Hey guys, today we are looking at support levels. What does support level mean for a stock trader and how do you benefit from that if you're building your portfolio? So I'm Rob Tatro, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm a portfolio manager. This is what I do. I buy stocks, I buy bonds, I, I sell stocks, and I build portfolios for institutions, for high net worth individuals, and for investors. So support levels, it's a number where when a stock trades, there typically is buying pressure at that number because the stock is so cheap and so affordable. Think of a $25 stock. Today it's at $25 and the company has generated strong earnings over the past 10 years and it's consistent. There's a little bit of earnings growth and yet the market sometimes is volatile. You might get emotion, therefore stocks move up and down. Every time the stock historically has traded down and dropped to maybe $20, buyers come in and you end up getting support. When you get buying pressure, the stock falls. It's at $20, maybe at $20.50 or $20.30. Buyers start coming in because that is a very cheap price for that specific company. Buyers come in and the stock doesn't break through, doesn't go negatively below $20. We would call that support level. So the stock goes down and then there's a bit of a bounce because there's a bit of support at $20. So buyers come in and when you get buyers, you get buying pressure, stock rallies. Maybe six months later, it happens again. The stock goes to 20 bucks, support. Again, maybe it happens multiple times in a week. But if that number has been tested a few times and it's held, we would call that support. The support is held at $20. And then when you break through that negatively, a trader might say, that's not a good sign. We broke through negatively $20. Therefore, perhaps the next support number is 15 now, support numbers can come in different ways. You might have a straight up, just a, a number, like a numeric number, which is typically round numbers, 15, 25, 50, 100. And those are, are, they're important for the investor because it's a number, it's a round number that they can wrap their head around, but it doesn't necessarily mean more than that. It's not a multiple of earnings. It's not a technical indicator. It's just a number. So if you're looking at numeric indicators, you might say there's support at $20. If you're looking at technical indicators, you might say there's support at the moving average, the 50-day moving average or the 200-day moving average. Or you might say there's support uh, at the MACD or stochastic or strength or RSI. You might look at any of those numbers and say there's support at that level. Maybe it's $22.50, maybe it's $17.50, but those are not going to be round numbers. They're numbers that are based on technical signs and technical trading is looking at stock patterns in the past and looking at specific stocks and seeing what their patterns are and where the buying and selling has happened. If a stock has consistently held support at a moving average, for example, a technical trader would say there's future support at the moving average. Therefore, as the moving average moves, you know that that is a support for that stock. Again, if you would break through that, if you would sell more negative, if you would get negative selling pressure and the stock would fall through, you're looking at a breakthrough, which is technically a negative sign for a stock. So these numbers, whether it's a technical indicator or it's a numeric indicator, these are support levels. And these are important for traders because it kind of tells you where you want to place your bids if you're trying to buy a stock. If you're confident that the stock will retest the support level, you would place your bid at or above those support levels and wait for that stock to go down to the support level and then you own it, hopefully at a cheaper price. Now, obviously, if you're looking at trading with patterns, you should know that this often doesn't work. There's a significant school of thought that believes in technical trading, but the vast majority of investors and portfolio managers they look at fundamentals as well. They look at stocks. They look at what's happening in the macroeconomic world, what's happening in the sector, what's happening with management. Do they have access to capital? How have earnings been? What are some of the decisions, the new contracts that are being made? Like That is critical stuff when you're looking at stocks. You cannot look at a stock in a void. You do need to make sure you're looking at the bigger picture, which includes the fundamentals, the macroeconomic, and the technical indicators. Now, just like there's a support level where the buyers come in, there can be a resistance level where the sellers come in and that would be kind of the opposite. So at the top, 
a stock might try to kind of break through and is not able to get past a specific number. Maybe it's $30. A stock, it, every time it gets up to $30, with selling pressure, traders are taking profit and the stock falls a bit. Tries again, falls a bit. Tries again, falls a bit. So this is when you would see resistance, which is the opposite of support. And if you get a breakthrough resistance, that's technically a positive sign for a stock trader. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. If you'd like to book a no obligation consultation to chat about this or anything else that's on your mind, go to www.speaktorob.com. I'd love to book that chat with you. No obligation consultation, guys. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and we'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.